chapters we've seen the organizer, the guided and quick edit modes, the create tab and the share tab. The missing link in this chain is what we're going to spend the remainder of the course exploring and that's the full edit mode. It's by far the most powerful editing area inside of the software so in this video I'll show you how to get there and give you a brief tour of its workspace. So without any further ado let's select an image to take him to the full edit mode. So go ahead and select the squirrel image that we imported into Facebook at the end of the previous chapter of course. And then once it's selected we can take it with us into the full edit mode by coming up here to the little arrow next to the fix button, giving it a click and then coming down and selecting the full photo edit option. As you can now see the full editor loads up on screen like so and just to make sure we're working with the same screen from the get-go I want you to come up to the top of the editor with me and click this reset panels button to restore the workspace to how it was the very first time we opened it up and ensuring that me and you are seeing the exact same thing in front of us. So let's take a look at everything we see before us starting with the area that takes up the bulk of the screen the image window which is where we'll find the currently active and recently imported image we can navigate the image as we did in the previous chapters so we can use the zoom and hand tools to zoom and pan the image respectively but I'd suggest using those keyboard shortcuts I demonstrated instead so in way of a quick refresher control spacebar to zoom in that's command spacebar on the Mac Control alt spacebar to zoom out which is command option spacebar on the Mac we can pan the image by holding down the spacebar to access the hand tool and drag it around any place we want to notice we still have the history option up here in the top bar and we can either undo or redo steps in our image by using those controls we also have the keyboard shortcuts control or command Z to step back or courtesy of our changing of the preferences control shift Z or command shift Z to step forward underneath that top bar we have the familiar menu items so let me briefly explain and show you what they're all about the file menu deals with all the technical aspects of the operation such as opening and closing and saving files the edit menu mostly deals with whole image edits such as the copy and paste commands the image menu lets us alter and amend the image as a whole. The enhance menu lets us add general enhancements such as making lighting and color modifications to our whole image or the selection that's active inside the image. The layer options contain all of our controls for creating and amending layers found in the layers panel. Select deals exclusively with selection outlines that we create using tools such as the lasso and the magic wand. Filter contains a jumble of different effects we can add to the image. View can help us to alter the view of the image inside the image window. And then window contains the different windows or panels as they're called that are available to us. And then finally the help menu contains the many different ways to get help whilst we're using the software. My intentions are that you won't be needing that one of course. Over on the left side of the screen we have the toolbox which contains the various tools we can use inside the full edit mode. So we've got things like the move tool at the top right coming down to the other tools like the type tool and the paint bucket tool. One thing to know about selecting a tool is if I go ahead and activate the move tool Notice how the options in this area just up above the toolbox called the options bar change with what tool we've got active or depending on what tool we've got active as it turns out. Well the options bar is of course as you can see context sensitive meaning that the options will change and relate to whatever tool we have active in the toolbox at that time. So when you have a tool active and it's not working exactly as you want it to start your troubleshooting off by checking the options bar nine times out of ten you'll be able to fix the problem there okay moving on below all of these we have two color swatches better known as the foreground and background swatches we'll be seeing these throughout the series but if we do want to change the color of either one of them 
we can just go ahead and click it like so and that will bring up the color picker where we get to choose the color we want from either these numerical values or on the color grid itself. We'll be looking at this command in more detail as I said in a few videos time so for now we'll hit cancel to return to the editor. Down at the bottom we have our project bin where we store the currently open images and in this case we have one but should we have more they would be found down here. Finally on the right we have our various panels that much like the quick edit mode help us to improve the various images we're working with by adding more functionality to what we're doing. So for instance we have the layers panel down here and we can open and close that panel along with all the other panels by visiting the window menu at the top and choosing whichever panel we want to work with. We can also move any of the panels around, they're not fixed like they were in the previous workspaces we've used, so go ahead and drag the layers panel out onto the image and we can place it back in the panel cluster by dragging back to where we want it and in this case at the bottom over here we're going to be seeing a blue line appear just like so. Now if we drop the panel will rejoin the others in this group. Notice up here we have two panels sharing the same space so we can just click on the panels to bring them to the front and make them visible. We can also move their location by either dragging them past the other panel and therefore changing its place in the stack or we can just drag the whole thing down to say the layers panel and notice when we get this blue line appear on its own that means that if we were to drop it here we'd squeeze the panel between the top and the bottom one essentially creating a center panel. Let's drag it again and this time we want to see the thin blue line appear around the layers panel. Now if we drop we can add it to the same space as the layers panel itself. Ok I think you get the idea. Let's go ahead and reset those panels by coming up to the reset panels option again and clicking.